Hey everyone, um, surprise stream today, right? I just wanted to break some things, break some things down, talk about some stuff. Um, there's a lot, a lot that that went on, right? Let's just make sure that everything's everything's good. The audio's good. How's everybody doing today? Got one person watching. Uh, let me go to my live information. All right. Thank you for everybody that hit the like button. Hey, have, how's everybody doing? Um, has everybody been looking at the num numbers? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I knew that was going to be quick. Uh, are the numbers out for AMC and GME? I've been trying to look for them. Um, I've been getting nothing but, um, you know, really blank information. Um, everything that I see is around uh, 30%, but AMC is at 31 from what I see here from Fintel, and then GME is also at, at 25%. So I don't know what the actual number's in. Um, some said GME is only at 30%. That's what I've, I've been seeing is I see that GME is at 25%, but thank you. I'm squeezing, all right. A 6 p.m. Eastern. Is that when we're, we're seeing numbers? Because I tried to look for, for something that, you know, was release information. I thought it was 4 p.m. Am I black? Half, yes. Very straightforward question. I like it. I like it, Warren Jones. I appreciate that. Um, what I miss? Uh, can I look at? See? Yeah, I'll get into some other uh, stocks. L let's review. I wanted to review exactly what happened today because you know after hours is looking pretty good, but I wanted to wait until people get in here, um, and then start going over because I don't want everybody to miss um, what I'm doing here. But you know what's crazy? Um, with the Weeble platform, I, I have some free stocks here. Let me know if you guys want me to open the free stocks and go through that, because I can definitely do that today. I muted the stream and that's the first thing I hear. What's the first thing you hear? I'm black? Is that what? I don't see color. Are you colorblind? Come on. Or are you actually colorblind? I'm I'm sorry if you are. Intel percentage is wrong. Okay, I was just I was just trying to tie it in. Uh, can I turn on music? No, I can't turn on music. If I turn on music, then it's gonna the video is gonna get copyright claimed and probably get taken down. You can't turn on any music. I mean, I have. Um, a lot of my brother's um, instrumentals that he makes, but I'm not going to do that either. Yeah, let's see what you got. Okay. Um, yeah, let me know. I want to see how many people want to want to see me, um, you know, go through the stocks because I got a number of free stocks here with the Weeble platform. So let me know if you're interested in that as we start bringing people in here. You know, we got 300 people. I'm, I'm sorry if you are colorblind. I made that joke. How am I been? Keep up the good work. Thank you, uh, Thamer. I appreciate that a lot. Um, is um worth buying right now? Um, I'll have to really go into the details. So definitely ask your questions as we start to go through this, and uh, I'll um. We'll talk about it. I just sold 873 AMC shares. Hope I don't regret it. Yeah, I mean, whatever, whatever fits, you know, your situation. You know, if you if you need to sell and if you're using money, you're not comfortable with losing, then yeah, definitely, um, you know, get out of there. You know, there's been a number of times where I was sitting here thinking about the GME money because um, I wasn't supposed to go in there, and um, even the second portion of putting um, uh, money into AMC, it was kind of a mistake, but. Um, double down to lower my cost basis, which eventually will save me some money if I could 
um, if we can get back to where we need to get to. How many shares of AMC and GME do you own? I own um, 1,700, about 1,730, I believe, of AMC and um, 100 of GME. So I own quite a bit of AMC. I'm down quite a bit of AMC. It's like $6,000 and I'm down on AMC. Um, but yeah. Can I do a quick take? I can do a quick take of something. Just keep asking. I'll, I'll ask or I'll uh, go over it. But yeah. Um, Intel report on shorts. Apparently it's not released until 6. And I've been trying to search for these reports. Even an older report. Just so I can get an understanding of where to pull it. And I could not report. I could not pull it. Um, what the reports say. There's no report yet apparently. Um, all I have is Fintel data. And my Fintel data, Fintel data is um, is 25% for GME and 31% for AMC. So um, I would imagine AMC has to be a lot higher. It seems like they are shorting a lot more with the amount of volume that's continually going into AMC. Um, I don't think AMC is over. GME might be over though. I, I don't know about it, but uh, we still have to continue to watch it. I just wanted to have a little bit of a pop because obviously GME money is not supposed to, that was not supposed to be a thing. Kind of late to the party. Are the GME shorts over? Um, we didn't get that information yet. I thought it was supposed to be four, but it's apparently 6, 6 p.m. So will I stream till 6 p.m.? I don't know, possibly. 200% short interest according to Trace Trades. Where did he get the information from? And was that recent? Was that like, is that like now? When did he upload that, that video? Come on, man. This damn phone. Um, when did he upload that video? It couldn't have been. No, he didn't do anything recent. Yeah, he didn't do anything recent. So yeah, uh, selling at a loss is not an option. Just hold. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm thinking AMC uh, definitely. I like I said, I'm holding for the long haul. I believe there's a lot of value um, in there. Um, but like I said, GME was not supposed to be a long-term hold. It was supposed to be a short-term hold. Uh, Trade did not report that. He said it was old data. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I was going to say 220%. Just that's that seems like old data. Thank you for saying that. And I didn't see a new video from him. There's no way that he would come out and say that. Maybe he said it on like Twitter or something. But I, I'm pretty sure I, won't, I didn't see that. Um, go through his videos. I can't show his videos. That's copyright. They'll take my video. They'll take the stream down. Asked last night, but I'll continue to ask that because I'm going to go through some other things first before we uh, talk about this. So I, like I said, I don't know about the interest. The interest is something that um, uh, we have to wait, I believe, until six. Um, if you want to see some free stocks, um, I can go through what free stocks I got here because I have a number of free stocks. Um, if you want to get free stocks yourself, hit the link down below for the Weeble platform. You'll get this platform and you'll get some free stocks. But let's let's go through this real quick. Um, let's see exactly what free stocks I got here. Uh, so I can claim 14 free stocks. It's probably going to be mainly around the same ones. So um, let's see. So I got Ford. That pays a dividend. AT, ADT. 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 So we're mainly going to get the same ones, which is always good. You know, um, you continue to hold one that you may have a ton of value from. I got another Ford. Uh, ADT so these can be valued from basically like the $10 mark all the way up to um, $1,600 so ADT mainly ADT and Ford that seems they always have like a certain pick that seems to be it so they always have like a certain pick that you can get when it comes to uh, getting free stocks so um, that's always good to get a number of free stocks so Trace Trade post video 20 hours ago. Look it up. 
and let's watch. I, I can't do that. <laughs> Ford took away its dividend. Yeah, that's not good. I haven't had, well, I still have Ford. I actually haven't checked my investment account or my, uh, my brother's investment account. So it's always good to have Ford. It's always good to have even ADT as well. So they always pick like, I guess, a couple of stocks that they'll give you. Um, and then obviously the, the big bang is when you get like the uh, $1,600 stock or a $100 stock or whatever. But yeah, it's not updated yet. No, it's not updated yet. Once I get where SWN worth $3, that's weird. The ones that you get for um, opening up an account shouldn't be the lower tier ones. They have lower tier ones um, for like, they have like a spinning wheel where if you invite a certain amount of people, even if you don't get them to actually accept the invite, um, you invite a certain amount of people, you get 11 spins at the wheel, which I just did recently. And um, it, they obviously have Facebook and Google in there, but you're most likely not gonna get those. So uh, yeah, it's always good. Um, uh, do I think a sell call for S and DL on on uh, twenty six dollars? On the, oh, on the twenty six is good. A, a sell, a two sell call for uh, S and DL. So you're expecting it to get a quick look at this. I want to show exactly what um, they're doing today. I know that uh, GME or GME looks pretty good today. So um, on the 26th, yeah, I mean it's it's possible. It doesn't. It looks like it's slow growth. That means that it's it's holding steady somewhere around there. Um, it might push above it, but we don't know how how strong this is going to be. Um, let's add in a another indicator, the EMA, 200 EMA. So yeah, it looks it looks pretty strong. It is coming back to the 200 EMA, which is not really a good sign for long term strength. But you only really need it to um, get over two dollars um, on the 26. I think it's definitely possible um, with the amount of growth. I would say yes. Um, that's not a bad not a bad option, but it's all. Like, like again, this is not financial advice. This is merely just my opinion. So let's go ahead and go into what happened today and, you know, why I felt so bad for um, a good portion of the day. So AMC, if you didn't know, really stuck around that $5 um, mark. It went down to a low of $5.26. Have no idea why it, it stayed steady at this low rate. Um, you've seen a lot of buying power, but obviously more selling power because they're they're really um, selling the stock. I don't know if there is short laddering. I don't know what's actually going on here, but it doesn't make sense why anybody would sell at these low uh, prices. Now it could be to the point to where people are getting um, close to their um, their cost basis. So maybe they invested at three dollars and they invested in a ton of shares, and now they're selling off those shares. That could be a possibility. But it just doesn't make sense exactly what happened. I know in the after hours, though, you did have a large increase uh, comparably to exactly where it's at. Um, but yeah, you had that large increase, but then you also had a, a sell off as well. So um, AMC just really disappointed me today. I was expecting something big because of the fact they, they were on the SSR list. Um, and they're going to be on the SSR list tomorrow, I believe, too. But the SSR list really doesn't mean anything. It just makes it difficult for them to short. So if they are going to short, then um, you know they can still do it as long as it's on the uptick, right? So hopefully this grows overnight. We can see some positivity throughout the week, and hopefully the end of the week can be positive. The same thing goes for GME. GME got up to a point to where I believe it was like 10% up in the after hours. All the way up to $55 and I say all the way up to $55 like that's a high price um, but it did come back down the same thing that happened to AMC went up come came back down um, almost the same shape as it was AMC for GM GME 
Um, and I mean, it was just disappointing. It was something that was really frustrating for me because I don't like to see losses in my accounts. I've seen larger losses and they ended up being very large wins, but still, you know, this is something that I wanted to get into where I'm holding overnight and, you know, make some money from it. So hopefully that's still the case. Um, um, Oscar, you say short, short, short squeeze is coming. Well, what makes you say that for AMC? Thank you, Samuel, for the $2 or $3 super chat. I appreciate that. SSR doesn't solve the problem. Yeah. When hedge funds have been manipulating for the past four days. That's true. Hedge funds do, or the, um, the SSR does not solve the problem at all because of the fact that, you know, they can still short either way. It just makes it difficult. If this squeeze actually happens, you'll be my hero. <laughs> I don't want to be anybody's hero. I just want people to, to make some money. And obviously, while the hedge funds are losing money, I want a bunch of people to make money because um, everybody's interested in, you know, exactly what's happening um, when it comes to these potential short squeezes. And AMC looks like it didn't even have any type of squeeze. It just pushed up a little bit. And maybe it was to the point to where um, the fact that we had two potential squeezes in a row and kind of lighten the second squeeze um, when you think about it. Because if they did have, if Robinhood had an issue with you know cash flow and um, also you know all the other brokerage accounts have issues with cash flows, then technically it makes the second squeeze a lot difficult to go through because you're freezing at the most important part, you know. But what doesn't make sense is where we were at. We were at the $17 mark and then all of a sudden it started to drop down saying that people weren't holding. I don't understand. Were people excited about where they were or were people or, um, or were people like, let me go back to five days. Actually, let me do a month. So were people happy about where they were up here at the $17 mark because they reached down to this $6 mark? They were like, all right, well, I invested the $6 mark. Let me gain my profits and, you know, get out. It could be. Yeah, thank you for the $2 super chat, uh, Thamer. I appreciate that. Um, and for saying 1.4K people are watching, please hit the like button. Um, hit the like button on this video. That really does help out. Um, get it up to, let's say, 300 likes. That'll be amazing. But yeah, I just wanted to take some time to really uh, talk about this because like I've been saying for a number of days, it doesn't make sense how we're seeing this much negativity with no positive days. We had this little tiny positive day that I wouldn't even count as a positive day, but no real spikes. Besides you, besides you looking at these spikes, these um, stop hunts. So what are you guys thinking? It's all short laddering. That's what it seems like. I'm definitely seeing that because I see a lot of volume. I see a lot of people holding. It doesn't make sense why the price would go down. So selling AMC tomorrow morning. All right, yeah, whatever fits whatever fits the bill for you. I mean, definitely, um, you know, do what's best. Will GME pop back up to 100? I'm hoping that it will. I mean, with all the negativity that I'm seeing, um, it's making me think that it's not every single day, um, but I have no idea. <clears throat> I have no idea what's going on behind the scenes here. Um, I have no idea if it's short laddering. I have no idea if, um, you know, we have, a certain company that's selling off their shares. I, I don't know exactly what's happening with AMC and GME. Um, it's unpredictable because you see the volume and you would think that the price is going to increase, but it doesn't. So that's where it's a little bit tricky. Um, so I would hope that it is. My my price is set for 96. Um, and then if it does get above 90, I'm going to set a trailing stop um, so that if it does drop down, then I can make a profit out of it because it was supposed to be a quick profit. And at this point, I, I pretty much need to make like $4,000 in order to make up for all of the days that I've been holding. So $4,000 would have been, you know, um, gaining an extra $40 on the stock price. I uh, got another super chat. Oh man, how do people sell in the after hours? My dad and old financial advisor, and even he doesn't understand it. Love the channel and love the energy. Thank you for um, saying that, Ryan. This is uh, where it's tricky. I, I actually don't sell in the after-hours market or pre-hour or uh, pre-market, um, and I've 
never done it. So I can't tell you how you do that. I'm, I'm not sure if you need a certain software or I believe um, it's a limited volume, but I, I'm not 100% sure. I couldn't, I couldn't fully answer that. So yeah, I mean, maybe if, if someone else knows in this community, if you do know, please answer that question because that would be a benefit to so many people. Uh, selling in the after hours. I never really hold. This is the first time I've I've held in the after hours market and pre-market and everything like that. I always sell by the end of the day, no matter if it's a loss or if, I, if it's a gain, I'm ready to sell. But there's a lot of positions that I have that are long-term and I'll, I'll hold those, but I, I'm not looking to um, sell those anytime soon. It's like years and years and years that I'll hold those companies. I'm gaining dividends from those companies, things like that. So uh, hopefully someone in the chat can definitely answer that question um, but yeah the whole market smoked weed today yeah it seems that way cannabis definitely went crazy today from what I've seen uh, Tilray Sundial yeah which cannabis stocks are you in I'm not in any um, right now literally um, since I've seen the positivity here um, all of I would be in one or two um, right now but since I've seen all of the positivity, I was trying to drive down my uh, cost basis here. And I did get my cost basis down on both of these, but not enough apparently. Um, and that's what I needed it for. That's why I was holding back when investing anywhere else, because I knew that I needed to basically uh, lower my cost basis on both of these areas. And I wanted to with the potential to gain so much money. So I'm not in any, but I would definitely be in some right now because it looks like it's a it's definitely skyrocketing. It's a positive industry right now. While everything else was really, you know, in the negative for the day, you know, you had cannabis that went crazy. So, yeah, what, are you in any? Do you have any, any shares in any of the ones that you mentioned? And that's for Miguel. Thank you for the super chat. TD Ameritrade, after hours. TD Ameritrade has after hours. Do you have to have like a setting to trade after hours? I'm Pretty sure that has to be a thing because I'm sure you are allowed to trade after hours in all of the platforms you just have to set it up to be able to do so yeah see that's what I was thinking um, it's the same way with like fidelity I think you have to set up margin you have to call them and set up margin as well um, it's not something that's automatically set up like a weeble um, so it's something where you have to contact so uh, I forget who actually said that so that would be how to trade in the after hours is if you have a certain platform, definitely contact their customer service and uh, they'll help you out. <coughs> yeah, I see this from uh, Sneak McGee. Uh, if you have Fidelity, you can activate you can activate it on your desktop. It's very easy. Yeah, I would imagine it's definitely easy. Weeble, uh, you can as well. I would imagine if they give you the after hours um, information, you're allowed to trade after hours on that platform. You need 25K or more, I think. Is that real? I thought that was just a pattern day trader that you need to do that. Like if you, if you, if you were labeled as a pattern day trader, you would have less than 25K in your account. That's that's the day trading rule. So I don't know about that. I'm pretty sure you can have any amount in your account to do it. It may depend, it may vary from uh, platform to platform, but I'm not 100% sure. So AMC is up 3% right now um, in the after hours market and GME is up 4%. So that's amazing to see both of them up. Um, I'm happy to see any type of positive movement because it's always been a negative movement. Are we seeing the George W, is that what you're saying? <clears throat> in what? Like right here? Ah. Oh wait. I'm over a couple of days. Let's see what, what's going on here. <clears throat> oh, we got a George. <laughs> we have a George W. Now we are seeing uh, W formation here. So we are expected to see some type of skyrocket here. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful that we're going to continue to see positive movement because I want it to go up to that $10 mark. That's where it really belongs. That's where it should be fighting it. <clears throat> it should be fighting everything at the $10 mark. 
um, because of the amount of people that are holding, the amount of people that are buying, I feel like that's the that's the area that we should be at. Now, whether it spikes to 20 or it doesn't, um, it should give and take from like, you know, 10, um, between 10 and 12, um, and you know, 10 and like eight. It should be fighting between that eight to 12 mark, right? Um, and then obviously pushing up as we start to see a lot of people get interested here. I'm new here, but why did uh, a lot of stocks rise on the 27th of January? <clears throat> the 27th of January. Uh, why does that date sound familiar? Um, well, it seems like they rose in the free market. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. We had AMC that rose on the 27th of January. We had DME that rose slightly in the 27th of January. Actually, not slightly, a lot, the 27th of January. <clears throat> there was just a lot of positive movement here. But then I believe when you got to the, I don't remember what date it was. What date was that? Was it the 28th or 29th? that they restricted trading? Was it the 28th? Let me know. I can't remember what actual day it was. I think that's the day they released short interest reports on the 27th. Oh, yeah. But then the 20, but then I believe the 28th, that's when we had that issue where they restricted trading right like literally the next day that was the 29th so around here where they restricted trading the 29th yeah i was gonna say it looks like it looks like it had to have been the 28th i mean that massive pullback it had to have been the 28th so we had all of that movement on the 27th because of the interest reports, right? And then um, on the 29th, they shut everything down. So as we started to see a lot of positive movements up to that you know, $500 mark, and then even AMC uh, moving up to uh, the 20, what was it, 25, 27, uh, top of 22, $22 mark here, but you have a high over here of 25. Um, it, you basically said, you know what, we're gonna restrict trading. We're not gonna allow you to buy these shares, and that's it. So that's what we've seen. They basically cut everything down, and then we obviously, uh, you know, kind of built our way back up, uh, gapped our way back up here to $17 to where they shut us down completely. And that's where I don't understand how the interest to this just dies off completely. Like after a couple of days, it dies off. And it doesn't because I believe a bunch of people are holding these. Um, yeah, let's not tell people to shut up. That's not not cool. I'm not invested in Doge, but um, yeah, I don't know exactly what happened during this time period, but it was absolutely ridiculous. Um, yeah, so like. Looking at looking at what happened through the the 27th through the 28th and seeing that drop down was absolutely ridiculous. And then we built our way back up and they still restricted trading through, I believe, these two days. Um, and then they opened up trading. And when they opened it up, uh, you've seen the price increase. They were off the asset. They were on the SSR list, um, but SSR didn't really mean anything. So we only went up slightly and then it started to decrease a lot more. Uh, RK. Um, Appling, thank you for the $2 super chat. Uh, thank you for this, the sticker as well. <laughs> Hello there. Um, it's the most held stock. I did hear that. That's the most held stock on Robinhood. It's, it's crazy to say that something is held this much and the price decreases that much. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. There's a bunch of things about what's happening with AMC that makes no sense. GME, on the other hand, like I guess with the the impact that it did have um, on the short, like this was a huge um, increase that you can get from this position, right? Um, a huge increase, which means that it was a, a squeeze. Now, were we gonna get another squeeze out of it? We did go back up to $400 and then it just started to really, you know, drop again. So 
it, it was definitely um, tough to handle for this. But GME, I wouldn't say is over. It's just very tough to think that we're going to get back up to that $300 mark or $400 mark. Um, did the FEMA report come out yet? No, it did not. I didn't see anything on that. Get your money up, not your funny up, I guess. I mean, I, could, I enjoy a joke every now and then. You didn't catch my stream this morning. I enjoy a joke. 226%, uh, that's not right. That's where it was, I believe, but it's not, that's not accurate, I don't believe. Um, has the AMC short reports been released yet? Thank you for the $2 super chat. No, it has not. Apparently, it's 6 p.m. Um, the only thing I have is uh, Fintel, um, and that, I believe, is sitting at, let me see, at, uh, for AMC is 31% and GME is 25%. Now, I don't know if this is 100% accurate. I don't know if all the reports are, are accurate here, but it, that's the information that I can go off of until we figure out exactly what's going on. Yes, thank you, Thamer. I appreciate that. We have 2K people watching. Please hit that like button. Um, get it above 500 likes. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate someone uh, coming out and saying this. You're amazing. Dead horse stocks are dead. What does that mean? GME old. Restricted. Who's restricted? We're not restricted right now. I ain't selling. Like the, <laughs> the Wolf on Wall Street. That's good. Uh, they changed Fintel. Wait, let's start. They changed Fintel, Fintel percentages yesterday. Does that mean that they're like accurate or close to up to date? There's like 70% buys and 30% sellers and much more. There's a lot more information that, that you get from this position uh, from AMC itself that just doesn't make sense. I don't know what um, Cal said, but there's a lot of stuff. I'm a Pisces. Will they give accurate data on short interest? I hope that they'll give accurate data on short interest. I mean, I want to think that everybody will be honest, but then again, I mean, you, you never really know. I mean, that's what, that's what it's all about. Are they gonna be honest? Are they not gonna be honest? I, I don't know how to fully answer that question. I would hope that they're gonna be honest here, but yeah. House proposes to cut off uh, $1,400 checks to families earning over $200,000. Okay. Sorry, I'm reading something else. But yeah, I'm I'm so upset with the with how things went today. Um, because I expected a little bit of positive movement with so many days that have been nothing but negative. With this bare minimum of a positive day, it made no sense why we wouldn't have a positive day coming soon. You know, I understand that there's supposed to be a tail, you know, it's supposed to um, um, dissipate a little bit, the increases, but um, this much? No. People are holding it so much that the price shouldn't be decreasing this much unless there's some sort of something that's going on. You know, they're setting up these walls right above to where our, our buying walls are. And it, it's not really sitting well with me. You know, you have these huge buying walls and these huge selling walls. There were a number of walls that I've seen that were over 100K um, in, you know, buying power easily. And I understand that doesn't make up all of it because you're only seeing the order book that's coming through then and not the um, market order that's coming through. So. I believe the order book will really go through what the limit orders are coming through as, so it's not gonna give you everything. But um, still, it gives you a lot of information that really tells you that buyers are winning in this case. What? Uh, $5.64 buy for 
320k shares i don't know what's going on with him amc is pushing hard aftermarket pre pre report i hope that means something yeah i mean i would hope that means something too i don't know if they're pushing i wouldn't say this is pushing hard um they're definitely making a move they're making a little bit of a move you see the upward trend which is something completely different than what you've seen in the past this is where, you know, I look at AMC even in the past and before all of this, and you could see a lot of movement here. You could see a lot of positivity, peaks and valleys. And that's what interests me in AMC in the first place is seeing these peaks and valleys and when I can get in, when I can get out um, and make it a quick thing. And then eventually seeing that dip, buying the dip and then having it skyrocket. But, you know, all this manipulation kind of messed up the, the standard feel to the price um, and how the stock moves. So right now this is, the best like positive movement you've seen in a little bit it looks more green than red even though it's kind of you know it's going upwards but it's a little bit flat at the same time so um it's good movement that's that's positive movement for me whether it's actually positive or not it, it looks great so we'll see how this ends up but i'm, I'm hoping that we can push above that ten dollar mark uh, continue to push um i don't want to have to sell at the ten dollar mark but if i see it's being overbought um, and this is going downhill. There's no, there's no room to squeeze. Then that's what's going to happen. Things these should be a nine to fifteen dollar post COVID. Um, I'm extremely confident. This is no financial, no financial advice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I would agree with you. I think that they are a a ten to fifteen dollar uh, stock. I don't believe that they're down where they were pre-COVID and during COVID. I think they definitely have a lot of potential to continue to grow. Uh, we have 2,500 people in here. Please hit that like button. Um, I ask only because it helps out the almighty algorithm. So please hit that like button. Also, if you're interested in free stocks, check out the uh, link down below for Weeble. Rip to my $1,000. Oh, well, did you sell? I own a PS, PS5 and X, Xbox Series X. It's not market, it's pizza. All right, understood. I don't know what that means, but okay. Will AMC and GME ever go back up? I think they will go back up. It just depends on how far you need them to go back up. So, uh, yeah, it, I believe that, I believe that uh, AMC has more potential than GME at this point because I don't, I don't think um, AMC really ever had its true uh, squeeze. It was, the squeeze was taken away. So yes, you have a lot of popularity, but people are, or I don't know what they're doing in these short ladder tactics or whatever they're actually doing there, but you have a lot of buying power in AMC. Uh, I find it, it a little suspicious that the report comes out um, when the after hours market is closed. Oh, when the aftermarket is closed. Isn't the aftermarket closed at, at 8? I guess it's a little suspicious. But, let me see. Give me a second. Yeah, after hours market uh, trades from 8 p.m. to or from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. So it doesn't come out after the after hours market is closed. Um, it comes out. There's still two hours left, but I, I would like to see it during the day because um, with understanding all this information at the market after the market is closed, then um, you can't really see true positive movement with all of the volatility with all of the um, the positive movement, the volatility that they do have. Um, the hedge funds can predict anything and they can set their walls wherever they need to set their walls if they need to. But I don't see why at this point, because we have, um, if they have 30% short interest, then that's not even that high. I don't know what their are 30% short percentage. So the amount of shares that are shorted, then it's not even that high. It's not something that's crazy. Like what GameStop was at, was it 140%? And their short interest was like 220%. So it's not something that's crazy high, but you know, whatever. 
whatever they can do in order to save a buck, I guess. Uh, my conspiracy theory, Wanda Entertainment switched uh, their AMC stock from B to A so they can sell their shares as if they expected it to skyrocket. Uh, so they can cash in like Silver Lake as in they expected another squeeze. How does that really affect? I've, I've been seeing a lot of this uh, Wanda um, entertainment pop up and how does that really affect exactly what's going on because um, you're saying they, they switched their, their AMC stock from B to A so they can sell their, their shares as they expected it to skyrocket. So they can cash in like Silver Lake. What does, that, what does that do for it? Sorry, maybe I'm a little blind to this, but this is a little over my head here. But I, I guess it, it holds some weight because I've heard it multiple times. <laughs> I've heard it so many times. Highly high regulated market stop spreading conspiracy theories about the underlying data. And trust me, I'm not spreading conspiracy theories. It makes no sense. Highly regulated markets. It's like saying, um, it's like saying something is um, a game is as referees that don't side with certain teams. There are people that, that do that, so they have to regulate those people, but they always slip through the cracks. But I don't know exactly what's happening. I'm not saying that there physically is some sort of fraud that's happening here. It just makes no sense with the buying power that happens, that uh, we have a lot of pullbacks with the amount of people that are holding shares, the most held uh, stock on Robinhood is now continuing to fall down, continuing to spiral downhill. If you're holding a stock, that means that the the the, the valuation of the company remains, you know, where that held stock line is. You're going to increase as you start to add more on. If they start to sell it, then that's a different story, but not at a rate to where it completely uh, depletes that uh, seventy to thirty percent. You know, the amount of people that are holding it. Um, so it, it makes no sense. All of the different things that are, that people are bringing up, you know, are are not really making sense here. Why we are even having these this fall? People are selling. I understand that when you have a fa a fast increase here, you do have a pullback, but not to the level to where it keeps pulling back at low prices. So for AMC, AMC is at five dollars and fifty cents. Name me one person that wants to sell at five dollars and fifty cents. Now, there's probably some people that bought at very high shares at a low price in order to sell their shares um, at just a, a couple cents higher in order to make a profit. That's possible. But you don't see all retail investors like that. So it's just tough to take in. But like I said, I'm holding on to AMC because it's not valued there. It's valued a lot higher. Some sketchy shit's going on. Yeah, I, I believe you. Backrock is the biggest bank. It holds six million. Hedge funds are shorting. Well, if they were shorting, they would have they would have um, open shorts. You think they're shorting now, and the information was coming from you know back then? Or I would just short this stock because they've been giving uh, negative revenue since the last year. Uh, Things games would be more popular. Well, well, no, it's not about for for GME, anyways. Um, yeah, I understand where the thought process comes from, and yeah, I would have shorted it, um, knowing now that they're making a lot of moves in order to improve the business by hiring new new people, um, trying to change the face of it, possibly getting you know, um, you know, um, working with other companies as well. I wouldn't say getting acquired, but working with other companies as well. Um, just to basically rebrand themselves and turn into something that may be the face of, you know, online gaming industry. I don't know how that's going to work, but um, it does seem like they are making a little bit of moves for uh, GME. Now for AMC, 
um, they're making moves as well, paying off debt with a lot of the money that they did receive. Um, and I feel like it's definitely a company that's going to um, be valued at a higher valuation here, especially you know being at five dollars. That's basically where they were pre-COVID, and you know, kind of COVID as well. So yeah, I, I don't see how it's valued at this low. So that would be my opinion. I mean, it's just an opinion. Everybody's entitled to their own, to their own opinion. I believe that you, I believed you thought the squeeze would come. Why did you lie? I, I didn't lie. Um, certain from, starting from the beginning to where I started to talk about this stuff, I can tell you that I definitely didn't lie with all of the information that was in front of me. It, it showed that the squeeze was, was definitely coming at a higher rate. The problem was that um, when they decided to restrict trading, that kind of brought a whole new level to things. Um, it, it looked at it and said, all right, well, they restricted trading, people can't buy, they can only sell, brought the price down, which makes me uh, believe that there's some sort of manipulation. I can't prove that there's manipulation. They just said it was a cash flow issue. Um, and I truly still do believe that there's potential for AMC. I don't know if it's gonna be a, a huge squeeze. The most potential is probably in AMC. GME though, um, with everything you know falling and the way that it's falling, it doesn't make me think there's gonna be a huge squeeze. Will the price spike a couple of times? Most likely. But I'm just trying to be realistic with you as time goes on. Um, I don't want to be like the, the people that I see on YouTube saying squeeze coming tomorrow. That's not what it's about. You don't need to lie to somebody, especially when it involves their money. I'm looking to be as transparent as possible and help you guys out um, with any situation here. So that's the whole reason that I make these videos is not to um, you know, tell people, hey, a squeeze is coming and then lie to them and you know, go on about my day. Because if I would do that, then right now where we're failing and where I'm trying to explain exactly what's happening, I wouldn't be making videos or streaming or talking about this because I would realize that, you know, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm wrong here and I've been saying the squeeze is coming tomorrow, which those people are going to realize that they may be wrong by saying the squeeze is coming tomorrow. And, you know, if they are right, then great. But if they are wrong, it's a horrible situation. You need to understand when things start to look pretty bad. But... um. I can tell you that it does have a possibility of, of moving. It doesn't, I don't think GME is going to have a squeeze up to $500 or $400 again. Um, I think it'll, at max, if I wanted to say something to where it will have a push to where a lot of people will buy into it, it um, it's probably $200. But the popularity is kind of dying off with GME. AMC has a, still a crazy amount of volume, but I'm really hoping that GME can push um, up to 100 150 maybe 200 but that's my that's my opinion i hope that i'm wrong i hope that it goes up to 500 but that's my opinion uh, because the way that things have been manipulated and whether people want to accept it or not um i still believe that you know amc is going to push up but gme is definitely going to have a little bit of a spike um i bought uh, 100 more shares of amc on the dip today totally agree with you worth uh totally more on the side note uh can you give an opinion on C A T B. Yeah, I can do that. Just give me a second. I'm going to address this other super chat before it you know, goes away. I don't want to. Uh, Honda has ownership stake. The speculation is why would they convert shares to be able to be sold at a low price? The idea is that uh, the idea is they wouldn't unless they suspect the price to go up or a buyout. Oh. So you're expecting that they they know something that we don't know and that the price will increase and that's what they're expecting. So um, they're looking to increase um, on their, obviously their value because it's gonna be a lot of money if they, they go from a certain point all the way up to whatever goes to $50. So I understand exactly what you mean. Um, so it's it's kind of like, like the whole call option where they're like, they know something that we don't know. So I understand, um, but uh, obviously that's that's all speculation right so hopefully we hopefully that's you know true right but um all this is tough to actually take in because i really don't know what to think at this point because you have speculation you have conspiracy theories you have um 
information that you see right in front of your eyes that may be questioned by other people. It's just absolutely ridiculous. But let's look at uh, CATB for a little bit. Today, it's been like a lot of other things. It was down um, today. It did have quite a bit of uh, a run. I like seeing the volatility here and not just a straight line. I like seeing the volatility. You can see that the 200 EMA and the 15 MA cross a bunch of times. I don't know what you're looking to get out of this, but it definitely seems that it is a short term um, thing. The way that it moves, it definitely seems short term, but let's look at a, uh, a 10,000 foot view, then we'll look at a 100,000 foot. Um, so it started at this two, $2 mark. It did have a rapid increase over basically the pre-market into the day and then had a rapid decrease, which is what you see. Any rapid increase has a rapid decrease. Looks like it really fights that point. I don't know why it would have this rapid increase. Was it just a spike in the amount of people that were interested? But it did finish higher than it was before, which is definitely good. It has it leveled out for a number of days, I guess based on the fact that it just wasn't as popular, didn't have the volume but people started to really sell off as people started to get in. So the volume probably just wasn't there, um, but now it's suddenly starting to increase with today being flat to negative. Uh, what was today? Today finished at up 1% in the, pre, in the after hours, it's up 2%. So I don't really see this as crazy potential. I see it as a short-term option if you wanted to, um, you know, gain a little bit of money out of it when you see it, when you see it uh, take a huge run. But I definitely don't see this as a, a crazy like option for a lot of people. As I look at a 100,000 foot view, it really doesn't look like the, it looks like a slow growth. You know, it, if you're looking for the long term, yes, you are seeing a slow growth here from $2 all the way up to um, even $3, um, starts to push that $3 mark, drops down a little bit, and then pops up and now it looks like it's holding around that $3 mark. So it shows positivity throughout uh, a long period of time. Um, this is absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, it shows positivity from a long period of time. So I would definitely say that it could be um, a s small amount of money, um, but a long-term option there, not something that could be, um, it could be a long-term option. Um, here when you think of it long term but you're you are just um, gaining like maybe a couple of cents a day so you would hold a little bit of money for a long period of time or you would enter with a lot of money for a short period of time and gain some money out of any spike that it does have that would be my opinion um, if I bought it uh, at $12 a share for AMC what would you think about buying more now just to improve the cost basis I definitely if you have the money to do it um, buying more to improve the cost basis is definitely a good thing because what it's gonna do is if the price does go up and you just want to break even you have the potential to break even a lot quicker and that's where a lot of people don't understand the the method of um, averaging down sometimes averaging down is bad um, because if it is something that is steadily decreasing, like what games, uh, GameStop and AMC are doing, if you think that it's going to go below that, well below that, and that's not the absolute bottom, then averaging down is not the best option because you can still lose a lot of money because as you average down, now you have a larger amount of shares and you have to reach a certain point to know that it is going to go positive. Now, if, if it was me, which it will be in my situation, um, and I needed to average down to $6, I would take my money and average down to $6, watch any type of price increase that it does have. And then if I'm looking to break even, I would break even. But that's my opinion. This is not financial advice. Um, you can do whatever you wanna do when it comes to your money. I don't want you to you know, make the wrong decision and uh, not be able to get out in time and then lose more money on the way down because the more shares that you have, basically the, another dollar that it gains is another, do or another dollar that it loses is another dollar that your overall shares start to lose. So if you own 2,000 shares and the stock price drops a dollar, you're gonna lose $2,000. So to make it that simple. Um, you've been diligent in saying you're not giving advice and you use your own, own judgment. Don't be discouraged by upset people. Thanks for streaming. Oh, thank you for saying that. I appreciate that. I just always like to make sure that people make the right decision on their own, that they're not following. I really dislike when people just play follow the leader because it's not a game that we were playing in, in kindergarten. I don't know when you play it, but 
it's it's not about following the leader here it's about me going through some of this stuff and hopefully you understand some things that I may teach you because I'm not perfect I learn things all the time so when I watch somebody if I watch trades trades or I watch uh, me Kevin or I watch anybody that knows um, a lot about the stock market or even holds a, a larger portfolio than me then I will basically say what can I learn from them take that information apply it to my own strategy and if it doesn't work in my strategy then it goes but it's always in the back of my mind because I know that it's an option it's something that I learned so I never tell people to uh, follow what I'm doing. That's why I'm always trying to premise with the fact that I'm not a financial advisor. Don't take this as advice. Don't follow what I do. So that's the whole reason why I do it. And like I said, I'm not perfect. I mess up all the time. Sometimes I can't speak. Um, and my wife will tell you that. Also, her family will tell you that. I, I can't speak sometimes. So um, <laughs> it just happens. But sometimes when I feel like when I'm at the camera, I can talk and be comfortable no matter what I'm actually saying, even though sometimes I, you know, kind of get words mixed up. But that's just me. I try and talk too fast sometimes. Words get caught up. Uh, a short call should come out at 6 p.m. Yeah, I'm going to try and get that information out. Hopefully I can uh, look at that. Do you agree that, do you agree with Trey that it is, uh, is over the media is still talking about it? But I agree with Trey that it, it isn't over if the media is still talking about it. Um, y yeah. Um, I think that I, I sort of agree with that, but it, it kind of it kind of depends. So if the media is media sometimes tries to hide things and sometimes they, they like to get the word out and they say, oh, well, this is going in a negative direction like what they're doing they say this is going in a negative direction so that they can steer you away this is what they a lot of times what they do this is why they report on a lot of the negative news so they'll say oh there's a there's a car crash and everything and most people you don't want to see a car crash like oh i don't want to see it but if it comes on the news what do you do you most likely keep watching so even though they're showing you all this negative news about something you don't want to hear about you still end up reading it and you get more engaged so that's what they're looking to do is one, they're trying to get you to read that so that one, you get discouraged from you know, investing into this stock, you pull your shares out, but then you also have a bunch of clicks on their website. They win three times. So yeah, I think he, he, he may be right. I'm um, talking about the fact that when they're still mentioning it in articles and everything like that, yeah, it's not over. Um, it's still something we have to worry about. Now, is it to the same magnitude that it was before? I don't think so. I don't think that GME is going to rise to $500. And if it does, I'm wrong. I'll be the first to admit it. But if it doesn't, then I want to let you know that I'm not going to just say, oh, I'm right. I just want to make sure that a bunch of people save money and um, they don't invest at these, you know, whatever price it goes up to. If it goes up to $200 and people are telling you to get in, I'll tell you not to get in. You know, that's that's what it is about. Now, I'll tell you to, to hold and understand what the what the market is doing and if you see that it's being overbought at the time then you know sell your positions definitely take your profit whenever you can take your profit and go because this whole this whole world is a, a win-lose um, you know situation right uh, either one person's winning uh, one person's winning and one person's losing there you need to be the person that's that's winning there's always gonna be that person that's losing so uh, if you're the last one out then you're probably losing in this case um, it seems like if things stay low, then we're the last ones out. But I hope it doesn't. New kids investing because of of the hype. Didn't invest. I cannot see anything. And invest what they can afford to lose. Gambling instead of investing. Yeah, you're right, Tony. Thank you for the five dollar super chat. Yeah, a lot of the a lot of the people that are getting into all of this hype and that are new to investing are not learning how to invest or even how to trade because this is not investing. You're trying to base it off of what everybody else is saying, whether they are saying a bunch of um, things when it comes to different indicators or um, when the price will increase. You're trying to really gamble and understand to go with odds. You know, who's giving you the best information? Um, oh, the odds are that Trey's giving me the best information. The odds are Matt's giving you the best information. The odds are me, Kevin, gives you the best information. This is where I put my money. Um, and you're playing, you're gambling, you know, who gives you the best information? It's about you. What do you see? When do you want to get out? What are you comfortable with losing? You know, um, 
it's not about just throwing all of your money that you can't afford into one area like everybody has done. Um, the only reason all of you know the money that I have in uh, Fidelity is going towards these two areas is because I wanted to average down and keep averaging down, which I don't really like doing and holding um, for a long period of time. But yeah, I think that new kids need to learn how to invest and how to trade the real way. So um, hopefully that's what I'm here to teach you, what a lot of other people are here to teach you, but yeah. So um, I don't know where that information will come out. If, if someone does get that information before me, please feel free to uh, send a link or whatever. Um, Bruce Wang. Hey, I just seen you in, um, well, I think it was a while ago in um, uh, Brian Jung's uh, stream. What's the short interest, bro? I don't know the short interest yet. I think it comes out at six from what people are telling me. Thank you for stopping by, by the way. It's amazing that you, you stopped by my stream of all people. But yeah, I'm trying to figure that out. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, Thamer, for the $2 super chat. Guys, I can see... I can see a thousand likes. Yes, I can see a thousand likes. It's in it's in the future. It's in the near future. Please hit that like button if you can. By AAPL at the moment. Thank you for the ten dollar super chat. Uh, don't you think that the hedge funds have been covering their shorts? In the last few days, a uh, low short position report will trigger uh, hedge fund shorting even uh, your thoughts. Um, yeah, I think that they were covering their shorts in the last couple of days, um, especially with it going lower and lower. They're going to obviously, even though it's not going to um, get as low as what they want it to in order to make a profit, they're still going to end up basically making money out of the deal over the overall situation because of the fact that they were at such a high point to where they were losing billions, uh, millions and billions of dollars. And now they're actually to a point to where they can cover at a, a lower price and end up, end up losing just millions of dollars, just mere millions and not billions. So, yeah, I think they were obviously doing that. And, you know, it it slowly brought the price up, slowly brought the price down. I think they were mainly doing that. Um, they had to have been during the time where a lot of the buys were restricted. So then, you know, it only brings up the price uh, a little bit. And even in the, the, the current days to where the prices are going down so much, you see these positive movements, these positive spikes, you know, that might be them just trying to cover it. I mean, that's just what it's all about. You never know what they're really doing until you see the interest reports come out and you see the, the short uh, percentage come out. So, yeah. What do I think about uh, MMNFF? Don't know what that is, but we can check it out. A lot of movement in this in this stock here. So if I was to give my full opinion of how this looks, let's look at a 10,000 foot view here. So a 10,000 foot view here has a lot of quick growth, a lot of quick growth with a lot of gaps, which I don't like to see. Any quick growth um, ends up having a fast fall. And that's why, obviously, when you see these separate the 200 EMA and the 15 MA, you're really excited about the fact that you do have that rapid growth. But you do also need to expect that it will come back to earth and back to earth might not be uh, a slow, you know, easy landing. It might be something that's really impactful. So I don't ever like to see that from a 10,000 foot view. It is a penny stock. Anything really below one dollar. I don't like investing into because it can drop significantly. But you do have um, it's 15 cents rises all the way up to a high of basically a dollar, you know, 98 cents or 99 if you want to round up. Um, but then let's look at the five day view. The five day view looks a little bit better. So it's not really a crazy rapid increase here, but um, you are seeing some positive movement, which does look pretty good. I'm really happy with any positive movement. I don't really like to see um, crazy gap ups here, but the gap ups aren't that significant. I mean, it's really only a couple of pennies, right? And that may be a pretty big percentage. But over today, um, you've seen 52% increase. So that's obviously crazy. I think it still has potential to, to grow, as you see over these last um, 
you know, couple of days, you're seeing it split from this 200 moving average. And seeing that shows that it's gonna to continue to spike up. So I definitely see a lot of positive movement here. You might see and you might see positive movement up past a dollar and then it'll level out right over a dollar. So I think it could be a, a, a good move. Um, not bad. It doesn't hurt to throw, you know, a few dollars in there. Um, guys, if you have enough shares and your bag holding AMC, consider covering calls if it doesn't go crazy again. Yeah, I guess that, that might be that might be a good idea. I just never like to mix things uh, together. I'm not really an options person. I want to start to understand um, options myself. Eventually I will, but I'm more of a day trader person at heart. We have uh, 2,500 people in here. Please hit that like button, get it above 1,000 likes. It's very close, um, 962. Thank you for the super chats, by the way. I really appreciate it. Um, basically 11 minutes and then I need to record some videos and get them posted later. Zom tanked. Um, did it. Let's see what Zom did. We still have a little bit of time. Uh, GME is up 3%. AMC is up 2% in the after hours. Uh, where is Zom? Zom tanked, but um, did it really? I mean, it's pretty much flat. It tanked it. Oh, it tanked in the, in the after hours and pretty much. Wow. That really dropped down, had a huge gap. Um, but you are seeing it kind of recover and flatten out, which is a good sign. Even though it did tank, that doesn't mean that it's completely over because you can see the positive movement throughout here. A lot of positive movement, a lot of new highs, new lows, right? New highs, new lows. Um, it did create a brand new low here from this previous low. Um, and it's flattened out, which means that this is a price that it's probably gonna fight at. Um, and it might fight upwards. I believe that you still have some growth here. Um, you just had some people that probably recognize profits. That's all I can say about that. Uh, hypothetically, if I gave you $1,000 cash to buy AMC or FCO, where would you? Huh? Where would I put my money? Um, let's see what. FC, that's a good, good scenario there. Let me go ahead and put this here and then I'll go to the next super chat real quick. Um, if I, you gave me a thousand dollars right now, the growth potential for fuel cell energy, I would definitely say is probably a little bit better. Um, you can just have a consistent growth. This is where I would put that money because Look at, look at my situation. I invest in a Roth IRA first, and I invest in all my long-term accounts first before I invest any money into these areas, right? So if this is a long-term option, which it looks like it is consistent, right? And I haven't even looked at the 10,000 foot view, but it is consistent. Yeah, I would go with this nine times out of 10 um, because it's the long-term growth. It's about um, gaining some sort of, of growth in your money um, without having to do too much. For investing in AMC, that's more of a job, more of a day trading position to where you're you're managing exactly where you're at when it comes to the amount and um, trying to make a profit. So yeah, definitely would take this nine times out of 10. I'm investing uh, lower amounts when, when young and losing it can help you make smarter decisions later in life. Lots of new investors linked it. Yes, I 100% agree with you. If you don't fail, you will not understand like, you know, the things that you could do wrong. Then eventually you will fail and everything will go wrong. So you need to make sure that you fail a couple of times. Now it doesn't have to be the biggest failure, but you can fail a couple of times and you can learn from those mistakes. So yeah, I mean, I totally agree with you. Thank, for, thank you for the super chat, Mr. Reeds, and I agree with you 100%. Um, this week in Civil War history, cover calls and cash cover puts is how you make weekly passive income and options, my friend. I, I would agree with you. I just don't, understand options too much. And again, I will get into options. Um, it's just gonna take its time. Once I um, you know, do everything I can with swing trading and day trading, I'm more moving into the swing trading portion of things rather than day trading, because day trading I will hold um, for only the day and not hold through the after hours and pre-market. But you know, swing trading, obviously you can go through multiple days and gain your profits over, over a, number, a number of days but it's not something that you hold for a long period of time. So that's something that I am interested in. Um, 
But uh, thank you for the $5 super chat, Mr. MXYZPTLK44. I appreciate that so much. But yeah, I had to go through a lot there. Let me get an analysis on A A P H A. Sorry, I try and go through a lot of this stuff here, but it's very tough to get a lot of stuff. But I'll make sure to. On, what's going on here? Um, A P H A. Let's see. Over the last couple of days, we have a ten thousand foot view of. Looks pretty good. A lot of recent growth. I mean, a lot of recent growth. I mean, here to here, I would say that you have sort of steady growth. Let me look at a 100,000 foot view here before I say that. Um, I would say you have a little bit of steady growth here. It does have more of like a wave uh, form to it. Um, you have crossings of the 200 EMA to the 15 um, moving average, which I mean is good for a lot of volatility. So that's not bad. Um, seeing this um, end cross and seeing it continue to stay away even at these lower points is definitely a good good thing um, and this massive increase really pulls that 200 EMA away from the 15 MA so if I looked at the the next couple of days here let's look at five days here we can see exactly what's happening um, in the five-day chart and um, it is pulling away the only thing is I I would definitely stress exactly what this growth growth is attributed to because most of this growth you can see comes from you know after hours market and even to here comes from you know, after hours market pre pre market and things like that which I would be a little bit skeptical of but it does have a lot of positive growth over the day it's not something that even initially like dropped down it was more of an increase and state increase until you had people sell off um, which even though they did sell off they didn't all sell off which which means that it has a lot of strength. Um, and you can see how it flattened out, but not a true flattened um, price action. It's more of an upward channel um, here because it does finish at a higher rate than where it, it dropped at. So that's definitely a good sign. And it might in mean that it um, will continue to grow as time goes on. But you always need to see where it's being overbought. Like at this point, it looks like it's being overbought. So where's the pullback coming? It's probably gonna come soon. Um, don't know how far the pullback will be maybe to about um, 50 RSI. So I don't really know exactly where the pullback will be, but it definitely has potential being this far away from the 200 EMA. But um, weigh your options on when you can actually get in. Just like I, I told people for OCGN, weigh your options on when you can get in. Uh, we have 2,400 people in here, 2,500. Please hit that like button if you could. Honestly worry about crashing at some point. The overall market, yeah. I mean, I'm definitely worried about crashing. Um, I've been worried about crashing for a while. Um, Matt is so negative on every stock except a very obvious AMC or GME. Where is, where is he over the top hopeful with so many good stocks under $4? Uh, let it go, bro, and cut your losses. No, it's not even about that. I mean, yeah, I'm positive about the fact that what we're seeing with the buys in AMC and GME, it makes no sense. Um, and there have been times where I've been very negative with that. But um, when it comes to a lot of the penny stocks that are under a dollar, I can't ever be positive about that because I've been burnt with penny stocks because penny stocks move so fast, most of them. Um, and I haven't really found my success with them. And if I do find my success, I can be more positive in them. I'm just not comfortable with them. For things that are under $4, obviously with stocks like this, you can see the positivity here. Um, I can definitely see the positivity. So that's what I'm looking for. And I can tell you that I'm not looking to be negative in any case. Sometimes I just look to be realistic. And realistic, in my opinion, might not be the same thing that you feel. So hopefully, you know, I can grow on you. Um, new stock uh new to stocks and crypto i have amc doge dr nokia would you consider this a good start for a long-term hold um nokia i think is definitely going to be a a longer term hold it doesn't really seem like it has too much short-term profit in it um right now and i really don't know what it did today but i'm pretty sure it was negative yeah, it was down just 1%. So it looks like it might be a good hold. I would definitely say if you're looking to start with long-term holds, always start with things that have dividends. Because gaining dividends 
just means a lot more. To someone like me, it definitely means a lot more because if you hold a stock, you're eventually just looking to sell it. You're looking to gain a profit out of it. But if you hold a dividend stock, you're looking for that dividend every quarter or every month or however often you receive it. So I definitely say that you start with a dividend payer um, rather than that. But starting with, with Doge, starting with a crypto is not bad, getting introduced to crypto. AMC um, could be more long-term as well because I believe their, their value is a lot higher than where they are now. And that's why I, I talk about them consistently. Did you mean GME when you typed R? You have to, Ben, because it's very close to the E on the keyboard. So I'm going to go with GME. GME, I don't know if that's 100% long term, depending what they do with the company. So um, AMC, Nokia, some crypto is probably a, a good bet. I don't know if GME is the best uh, for a long term position, but there you go. Hopefully that helps. But yeah, definitely invest in something that has. Um, uh, a dividend that pays you a dividend uh, CRSR over 100% beat the earnings today this stock is going to fly what's your opinion on this stock well it sounds amazing you talk it up let me click a oh, there we go okay y'all y'all group advice well, hopefully everybody um, what's your opinion on Yala Yala group I'll, I'll check that out. Um, but yeah, like like these ones sometimes. I can't really be 100% positive seeing how today went here. Like seeing seeing this right here um, makes me think that you know the 200 EMA is over the uh, 15 uh, moving average. And the way that I'm looking at this, um, it's completely dropping down, hitting a, a new low. And but the only thing that is a saving grace is it is, it is slow recovering. Means that. Um, you have a lot of buyers that are fighting to push that price up, which makes me think really good positive thoughts on it. Now, with all of this quick downward movement, um, kind of makes me feel like they're, you know, getting up to that point, slow movement up here, slow growth, and then selling off when they get to their pro profit target. And um, that's what it's looking like. Every time it gets up to that profit target, it's selling off dramatically or um, really having a crash landing. So let's look at a I love the volatility here. If you're talking about a day trade, day trading stock, this would definitely be it. Um, this is something that you can really move a lot um, in a long period of time. Swing trading, definitely um, something that you can move from $34 up to $49, all the way back down to $40 or whatever. And it definitely has a lot of movement. For long-term growth, I wouldn't say that that's an option. But for swing trading, this is a really good position to get into. Yeah. It, you said it moved um, 100% today? Sorry, maybe I'm missing something. But, uh, I mean, it looks good as a day trading option. That's all I can say. Have anything here on... I don't know if I can just type Yala. I don't know what, what that is. If it is something. I don't know. Uh, ticker symbol give me a ticker symbol uh, let's see if we have the report here I don't know where I can get that uh, if somebody else gets there before me please let me know Sometimes I cannot find this. Sorry if you hear my daughter running upstairs. Report delayed. 66%, where are you seeing that? 66% is amazing, where are you seeing this? Short report, the short report man, the report delayed. Thing is delayed. Report out. I've been trying to find it. I can't find exactly where it is. Uh, AMC 66% short interest. Is that what we're saying?
people in the chart are okay. uh wait sorry it keeps moving you know what i'll go up here people in the chat are saying uh the amc short interest is 66 percent market watch says 78 percent really did they just update that now like i don't i'm not seeing anything I'm not seeing a damn thing. I'm not seeing a damn thing. Someone can direct me to that report because I'm, I'm not finding it. I'll spend the money. I just don't know where the hell it is. If you do have something. So market watch is saying 78% interest um, and 66% interest. But I want to see how many, sh the short percentage as well, not just the short interest percentage. Ninety-one percent of possible short. Almost nothing is squeezed. Everyone is holding. Everyone holding will be rich. <laughs> Time to buy. Well, I. I need to see these for myself. I really can't find them. I've been trying to find them on the uh, FINRA. <laughs> it's like everybody will be rich. What? Um, wait. I want short interest data. Um, can somebody send me this? If you could send it via, like if somebody's uh, looking at this, send, send me this uh, via Instagram, that would be amazing. Or put it somewhere, uh, go here, there we go. Look at that. So we're looking at market watch. Um, when was this, when does it say that they were last updated? CME is at 121%. AMC is at 78%. Is that updated now? Because I thought those were the old numbers. Yeah, I was gonna say that looks like it looks like old numbers. Thank you for the super chat, by the way, but I think those are old numbers. Does anybody have the The new numbers here, because I cannot look them up. They're just lying, bro. I know 226 is lying. Yeah, I need to find that. Give me a second. Let me let me do some. Some really big some research here because um, we're not looking for just the short interest we're also looking for the short percentage right the amount of shares that are shorted um, Short interest as of close installment. Why am I not getting anything here? I'm on the FINRA website, but I don't know where to go here. Um, short interest reporting. Short interest filing instructions, no.
I don't know where the hell to go here. Report delayed to 6.15. Where are you seeing this at? Can someone send something via Instagram? That would be great. That would be amazing. Because I kind of need to get off this, but I want to... I want to know what's going on right now. Alright, I thought those were new numbers. Yeah, I, I figured they were old numbers being at, you know, 120 percent. They were still at 120 percent. Everybody would be buying in at that point. Let's see what the numbers are doing while we're waiting to see what everything's still at one percent or two percent number report delayed two weeks amc stock is so low you don't want to release it two weeks what are you talking about it can't be delayed two weeks thank you for the super chat i appreciate that It says 66%. Um, no, yeah, the 29th is old data. Wait, 29th is not old data. That's what they should be going off of, the 29th, right? Yeah, as of the 29th, that should be the newer data. And it says it's 66% um, uh, for interest, 37, 37 million volume for AMC, is that what it says? Thank you for the, the super chats. I appreciate these. What's GME say? I want to figure this out because I thought I'd just seen something that gave me the right data because I seen the 29th. I think I might have it. I think I might have it. No, I don't. That's overall market short interest. That's not good. Thought I had it. Consolidated format. I don't want the consolidated format. I want the broken out format. Yeah, I don't know where I can get this data, man. Instagram says user not found. Why? Give me a second. It still brings me the old link. I changed this. And I changed my name. That's why. When I change my name, um, obviously the link changes. Give me a second. All right, try again, Matthew Swinnon. Uh, two minutes ago. I've been following your YouTube over the past few weeks covering GME AMC. Uh, we'll answer that later. Yeah, send me send me something if you have anything. Because I don't have anything here. I've been trying to find it. 
if it is uh, what the percentage what what would it mean for people who are holding at the moment it is short that percentage what does it mean for people that are holding if it if it is um, a percentage that we're not comfortable with seeing a squeeze I don't think that it will um, affect it in a crazy negative way um, it's just something where you won't expect a spike so um, if you see a high amount of uh, short shorted shares and um, high interest as well yeah people are gonna drive up that price in order to um, you know obviously know that the price is gonna drive up a little bit higher after they start to cover their shorts because if they're continuing to drive this price down by shorting then that means they continually started to short and adding short positions on top of the shorted positions they already had instead of covering their shorts which they could have possibly been covering their shorts I just don't know exactly what happened there so uh, let's see anybody sent me anything um, but yeah if you if you look at the short percentage and we're not up to par it's mainly gonna mean we're not gonna see a huge spike it's probably gonna take a while to, to push up for AMC and GME might be over if they have a, a small percentage that's shorted so hopefully that's not the case AMC and GME short reports were delayed Check market watch. I sold OCGN today. You did? Did you make a good, good profit? Uh, short interest report at 4 p.m. Eastern. It, it's 6 p.m. Short interest at 37 million. On See, that's the right 27% of loaded interest. 66% average volume. I'm trying to figure out what you're, what you're saying here. Where are you getting this data from? Um, Ant, Ant card, where are you getting this data from? Fin, FINRA site crashed. I can imagine if people are really looking at it, the data will be manipulated. I mean, it's a possibility. I don't know. Um, I would say I would hold it to the truth. Um, hopefully it's not. It's 66% good. Um, it's pretty good. I think they were at 78%. So that means they must have covered some, but they still added on to theirs. If it's 68%, because I believe they started at 78. Um, I'm pretty sure. So that means they're still short potential in AMC, a lot of short potential there. Gosh, 33% on FINRA is fake. I mean, yeah, it could be. I, I really don't know what to believe at this point. Dude, can you go to Market Watch? I, I went to Market Watch and Market Watch gave me, let's, let's go. See, I just clicked on this and I these are this is old data here. This is old data. And this is what I'm getting from them. I, I don't know what like it's not 78%. That's what it was before. Um, see the short date was um, 115. If we can get a short date of 129, then we'll be fine. So that's what I want to see. I want to see the the percentage of floated shorts being at like, you know, 80%. If it's, if GME is still above a hundred percent, then there's still a huge potential, 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 so I was gonna say, potential. Um, but yeah, I mean, this may be wrong, but I, I really don't know at this point. I really don't. But I want to continue to search for it just so I can get an understanding. Go to Market Watch and search AMC 
left side of the page. Oh, but does it say when this data is actually up, updated? So here's what they're talking about. Um, right here would be 37 um, million shorted, shorted shares. Is that what that's looking at? And um, uh, the average volume of 115 million, 66% um, floated, shorted, float shorted. Um, I'm trying to think of when this was actually up, updated, if they had any type of information here. Because I don't see anything that's giving me that, the information that I need, you know? Uh, February 9th, AMC Entertainment holding stock falls underperforming. Okay, I understand that. But I'm not seeing anything that I need to see here. Like, I, I understand it says 66%. Uh, wait, go, go back. Someone's telling me to click on the ticker. Ticker symbol? Um, updated today at uh, 6. Oh, 6. Well, yeah, I, I mean, the chart information, I understand updated, but I don't think everything's updated at the same time. Click on the ticker. I can't click on the ticker. It won't let me. Um, so yeah, that's what it's looking like. Sixty-six percent. We're gonna need. We're gonna need more information here to see what's going on here because I'm. I'm totally lost as to where I can get this information from because I've been trying um, to see when I can get older reports. But mainly, it comes through Market Watch. So hopefully, we can we can see an updated um, report or updated um, article somewhere, and uh, we can go from there. But I need to go and eat some dinner. Um, hopefully, this means good news for a lot of people. But I will be streaming tomorrow to give everybody um, the the good or bad news. Uh, click on the sixty six percent, and it will tell you. I feel like people just say things. Yeah, that's not that's not true. It's not one hundred percent true. AMC ninety one percent. What are you talking about? I mean, it could increase, but where are you seeing this from? Because usually, when this happens, people start trolling. And I don't. I don't like that. Why am I so married to it? Like to AMC, um, I have twelve thousand dollars into it. I think I should be married to it. You know. Uh, thank you for the five dollars super chat. Uh, check your Instagram. I sent you some some findings. Uh, James Little. Okay. Uh, hopefully that works. Uh, let me open it in OneDrive. Why do I do always? This is the date is December nineteenth on this. Document history. Yeah, the date is December nineteenth on this. You have any? Yeah, I don't know. That's December nineteenth. That's. I don't think that's going to help. Yeah. Uh, who's telling? Me? Look at the chart. Look at the tick up on the chart.
What? <laughs> I see 91%. What is that spike? 16 dollars. Better not be right now. But yeah, you probably see this. No, I don't know. On Market Watch page to the right, the short interest says, uh, the short interest says the date is updated uh, one night. 129 well that's good um I, I i really need to go because i need to eat dinner uh we will update everybody on this tomorrow i'll do some research and hopefully we can have some good news um with this but yeah um the data is is somewhere um hopefully 66 percent. 66 percent is good you know that means that you still have a number of shorts out there that we can still have them cover still drive this price up on and i don't know what they're doing in order to drive this price down but it makes no sense to me the short interest says uh january 29th that's not old data it's from it's based on the 29th so even though it took like nine days or i guess 11 days in order to do it was from the 29th the previous information was from the 15th so that's just a heads up but i'm gonna get out of here we will get into this tomorrow make sure you hit the like button on your way out but uh that's pretty much it thank you again for joining the stream and uh, i gotta end this so